Hey everybody, welcome to Adventures with Peps, and it is time for some more aliens. I am finally in my flow with painting the alien figures. This time we are looking at Private Frost. Now, I gotta be honest, I have just this very day, as I'm recording this voiceover, just finished watching Alien Romulus, and I'm gonna say this, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. it. had some issues, but overall, I really enjoyed it. So I'm quite happy to be painting some alien figures once more. So who is Private Frost? Okay. Private First Class Rico Frost, nicknamed Frosty or the Zen Master, owing to his cool attitude, was a member of the United States Colonial Marine Corps, part of 2nd Platoon Bravo Team. He was a member of the combat unit deployed to LV-426 aboard the USS Asalico in 2179. To investigate the sudden loss of contact with the colony of Hadley's Hope, he perished as a result of the xenomorph infestation of the colony. Frost was part of 2nd Squad's rifle team along with Corporal Dietrich and was also a skilled martial artist holding a first degree black belt in the Marine Corps martial arts program. He was killed by friendly fire inside the hive when Dietrich accidentally set him alight with her flamer. Ooh, that's harsh, that's harsh. Ugh. Frost spent breakfast aboard the Sulaco reminiscing about past operations with his fellow marines, particularly one deployment when the group engaged in relations with a group of Acturians, I think that's how you pronounce them. Unfortunately for Frost, the one he ended up with was male. Before being briefed on the mission by Lieutenant Gorman, Frost and Corporal Dietrich took time to practice their hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. After the briefing, Frost was readied and checked the team's pulse rifles. Now, I could keep going on and on, but ultimately, he dies in the process. Uh, yeah, the processor core. It's sad. He gets set on fire by Dietrich. It's not a very good way to go, but ultimately he is armed with your standard issue M3 pattern personal armor, an M10 pattern ballistic helmet for protection, shoulder lamp, obviously for his illumination, chest plate, uh, you're not going to see it on this model because it's pretty much covered by a flamer, but he had a little white arrow that said heart inside it. And then he had a sticker or a piece of tape that said, when in doubt, nuke him on his left shoulder, written in red. And he also wore a watch on his wrist. I don't know why he's telling me that. Uh, on the mission to LV-426, Frost was armed with an M240 incinerator unit, which we can see on the model. And this was requisitioned by Sergeant Apone inside the hive, leaving Frost only with his pistol, the Heckler and Koch VP-70 for defense, which he kept in his holster on his right hip, which is on this model. He also briefly used Hicks motion tracker and was qualified to drive the armored personnel carrier. So that is good old Frosty. He was a short-lived character in that film, sadly for him. But as you can now see, I've completed the sand golem stage of the model which I use for the softer combat fatigue on these models. I'm not going full camo. I know some people have on the good old internets. That's not going to happen with me. I do not have the patience, the time, the focus to do any of that. So we're going to, we kicked off with Sand Golem, as I said, for the under fatigues. Now I'm going to work my way around with the camo cloak green. Now, because I'm doing these models one at a time, I have come to notice that my overbrushing with the white before I put the speed paints down will differ between models. So this model is actually going to come out a little bit darker than uh, Hicks did. But ultimately, he looks good. From three foot away, you're not going to notice. These are ultimately just board game playing pieces. And I'm only painting them for my own joy and hopefully for your joy too. And this is probably a good time to throw in that like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you want to really be grateful and give me a little treat, feel free to hit up that coffee club. It's $2 Canadian a month, which really shouldn't be a lot in most currencies. And I'm using that to fund my coffee. 
my current uh, my current supply is an almond blend, which I'm rather enjoying. Maybe I'll do a little thank you note to my current uh, backers. There's three of them now. <laughs> I'm I'm growing in popularity, guys. It's amazing, right? I think you've guessed by now I'm waffling. But you, you get the idea, I'm painting everything green. So let's just uh, jump on into the next stage. Now, I purely use a very limited selection of paint. So for the skin, I am going to use the dark wood. Uh, there's definitely going to be better paints out there for this stage, but that's what I've got to hand, and it's what we're going to run with. Obviously, if the army painter happens to watch this and want to send me anything, I will happily take it. But until funds improve a little bit post summer holidays and the kids are back at school and they have money again, we'll uh, we'll make do with what we have available. Luckily for this model, it's just one hand and his face. As far as the way I'm painting it, the hand that is holding the barrel of his incinerator unit, I have made the assumption that it would be gloved, because that's going to be hot. So I'm going to assume he wears a glove on that hand. So I painted the whole hand green on that side. I then grabbed the grim black following the skin being finished. And this we're going to use on his feet to pick out the boots. And then I'm also going to pick out his uh, belt pouches and all that good stuff. I think on Hicks and maybe Vasquez. Let me have a quick look at the model. I used hardened leather. Uh, I forgot to do that on this model. I only had grim black in reaching distance and it's been so hot in Ottawa that I was being really lazy and did not want to move away from the fan that I have blown on me whilst I'm painting so I just used grim black <laughs> I'm so lazy I'm terribly sorry but it was it had to be done so I'm gonna work my I'm gonna work my way around and get all the pouches done back to Romulus uh, I'll post a picture because you guys will need to see it. I managed to get the Alien Head popcorn tub. It was twenty four ninety nine Canadian. I absolutely love it. That was worth every cent that I paid for it. I am over the moon that I have it. It looks hilarious on the shelf. I am very excited to show it, show it off to you all. I'll probably throw that in the uh, the community channel. But yeah, I'm so happy with that. I'm so happy. Oh, you can't believe the look. I was smiling my head off as I was ordering it at the concession stand. The teenager that was serving me gave me some weird looks, but I was so happy to have it. So with that stage done, we swiftly move into painting his weapon, which is the incinerator unit. Now I do have Hicks and Frost painted. So that's two of second team now complete, which means I should either paint Dietrich next or Drake the smart gunner. I'll probably do Drake next. I think he'll be the next video. I feel that makes the most sense. And then I can finish second squad off completely. And that'll make me happy because I've got Gorman, who's the lieutenant. I can then work on first squad <coughs> and then a pwn after that and I'll have the whole squad ready to go. And then we really can start playing some alien games. I'm so excited to give that a go. But pretty much only got one step left now, which is going to be the blood red. I'm using that on his lamp. I don't know why I picked red. It was a random choice that I did for Hicks ages ago. And I moved, did it for Vasquez. And <laughs> I'm just going to have to keep going with it now. No yellow lamps for these guys. These straight up red. And yeah, that's it. He's painted. So I'm going to paint his base black, do some metallics, pick out his nameplate, and I'll get you some glamour shots. I have waffled on for long enough, so I hope you enjoyed. Hope you're uh, excited for next week's painting, and I will catch you very soon. Cheers for watching.